Virtually True is a story of a boy Michael who loves playing virtual computer games in which the player interacts with the other players in real time. A boy named Sebastian gets injured in a motorway accident while playing one such game in his father's car. The story tells us how Michael gets connected to Sebastian's memory and then helps him come out of coma. Michael and his son Samuel or Sammy are sitting in a study room. Their casual discussion suddenly takes a curious turn and takes Michael back to the days when he was 14 years old. Dad, why can't we remove this piece of junk to make some place for my PlayStation? It's so outdated. A Pentium 150 megahertz processor, 256 of RAM, 1.2 GB hard disk drive and 16 speed CD-ROM. Who uses computers with such configuration now? I know Sammy, but there was a time when it was the latest thing available. Complete with speakers, printer, modem and scanner. I could do anything with it. Print, play music and create displays. It even make my rubbish homeworks look fantastic. During those days, the best thing that I could do with this was to play games. I used to play Tornado, Meba Bash, Black Belt, Kairini's Castle. I've played them all. With the screen so big and the volume up loud, I've always felt I was inside the games. Battling out with the Z's or B's, Twisters or whatever. With such slow RAM and low disk space, the racing car like game would move like a snail. It's not useful anymore. Why are you so bent on keeping it? It's a long story. I'm not sure, but I should tell it to you. Come on, Dad. You are the coolest dad in the world. Tell me. Okay, fine. So one day, when I was about your age, your grandpa took me to the computer fair. We came away with a virtual reality visor and a glove and a handful of the latest interactive psycho drive games. They allowed you to control the action by what you were thinking. They were terrific. As soon as I reached home, I launched myself off into the first of the games, Wild West. It was like I was really there, striding down the dusty track through the center of a town with the sheriff's badge pinned to my shirt. As I burst into the saloon, Black Eyed Jet, the fastest gun in the West, challenged me for a duel and left the saloon. I made up my mind to accept the challenge and then something strange happened. The second sheriff appeared through the back door shouting and waving his arms about. I realized that the game was more complicated. He looked of my age. Though he looked like a computer image, he somehow did not move like one. He stopped me from going out. I followed him. He came out from saloon jumped off a horse and sped off. I repeatedly asked him who he was. But he didn't answer. He just said he has seen a few men on horseback speeding after us and asked me to keep my head down. Suddenly, a sound of gunshot echoed. He groaned and slumped back against me. Game over was the message that flashed. Then I noticed the printer had come on. I picked up a piece of paper. It had a picture of the second sheriff, but he was wearing jeans and a sweatshirt. It read, I am stuck. Please help to retrieve me. Try Dragon Quest. Sebastian Schultz. Dad, did you play Dragon Quest then? And what was there in that game? Whoa, one question at a time, Sammy, okay? I did not play on that day. It was already very late. Next morning, I was back on my computer to play Dragon Quest. I was soon walking through the massive studded doors of the dragon's castle lair. I had to rescue the fair princess Aurora from the wicked dragon and collect the wicked creature's treasure along the way. 
Soon I reached the top of the tall tower where the princess was imprisoned. Behind me, I could hear the dragon roaring and in front was a young princess with long golden plates urging me to rescue her. Suddenly, a second light appeared from the wardrobe and said, It's me who needs rescuing. It was none other but Sebastian. He then leapt out of the window and down the hair rope, which he made by chopping off Princess's two long plates. Suddenly, the dragon appeared. I leapt too. As I lowered down, I felt the dragon's fiery breath. I could hear and feel and even smell the evil dragon following in close pursuit. It was all so real. While we were approaching the dungeons, the dragon appeared at the end of the corridor and was upon us. I swung my sword, but the dragon was only interested in Sebastian and I could do nothing to prevent it from getting him. The next thing I saw was the message, game over. After some time, there was a message in the printer, better luck next time. Please don't give up Michael, otherwise I'll have to stay in here forever. Try jailbreak. I think it might work. Cheers, Seb. This is real dad. He seems like a stalker, following you everywhere. <laughs> Not really. He really needed help. This time, I didn't even bother to read the rules of jailbreak. I knew that my task would be to rescue the boy. Guess who is my cellmate in the game? Sebastian! Correct! With the help of a swipe card, we were soon out of the cell and racing down the corridors. Sirens wailed. We managed to dodge the guards fled the dogs, made to the staircase and finally pounded upwards. Sebastian pointed to a helicopter in the sky and said, if only it could go a bit faster. Unfortunately, it was not fast enough. The door behind us burst open. The dogs hurled towards us. Sebastian took a step backwards. I screamed, no! But he slipped down through the air to the concrete below. A message flashed, game over. What was the message in the printer? This time the printer was empty. I felt really bad. I had failed Sebastian. Then it occurred to me that Sebastian Schulz was the game. I did it, Sammy. I went back to the Wild West Dragon Quest and Jailbreak, but I never met up with Sebastian again. Sad story, Dad. So I guess you'll never meet him online again. No, Sammy. The story is not over yet. One day there was a sheet of paper in the tray. It said, Can we have one last try? I think the helicopter was the right idea. There's got to be some kind of an accident. Go into war zone. If this doesn't work, I won't bother you again. Cheers, Seb. The next morning, I was on my computer. It was some city with tall, windowless buildings with plenty of holes made by bullets and tumbling walls. Machine gun fire raked the sky. Bombs exploded all over. All I knew was that Sebastian and I had to make it to that helicopter. We ran across a no man's land of rubble and smoke, dodged the fire from a sniper hiding somewhere and aiming at us with a telescopic rifle. We went through a door in a wall and saw the helicopter waiting for us. We started to run, but the tank fire sent us scuttling back to the wall. As per Sebastian's suggestion, we jumped onto a new bike jeep and went off. A tank came hurtling after us. Sebastian slammed on the brakes and sent the jeep skidding into a spin. 
I left gear and jumped into the helicopter. The helicopter started to go upwards. I asked the pilot to wait for Sebastian. He was sitting in the jeep as if his body had turned to stone. The next moment, next moment the tank crashed into the jeep. Sebastian was thrown into the air. He landed with a thud just below the hatch. I pulled him up. As he sat down beside me, the helicopter soared into the sky. I had rescued Sebastian at last. Uh, flashed up. A score of 40 million was flashing on the screen. 40 million? That's awesome. Congrats, Dad. You finally managed to save the boy in your game. At that time, it was just a game even for me. But after a few days, I was shocked to know that Sebastian Schulz, the boy from the game, did exist. But how is this possible? While travelling on a train, I read an article in a newspaper that a lady passenger was reading. Read this, Sammy. Miracle Recovery. Sebastian Schulz, a 14-year-old schoolboy from South London, awoke yesterday from a coma that the doctors feared might last forever. Six weeks ago, Sebastian Schulz was badly injured in a motorway accident. His condition on arrival at the General Hospital was described as critical though stable. Despite doctors' hopes, the boy did not regain consciousness. His parents were informed that their son was in a coma. At a press conference, Mrs. Schultz said the doctors were doing all they could. But in our hearts, we knew he needed a miracle. Now that miracle has happened. This is incredible. But how come he was playing with you online when he was in coma? Yeah, I was also puzzled. I checked the net to learn more about the miracle recovery story. Apparently, at the time of the accident, Sebastian was using his laptop to play one of the same psycho drive games. Probably, Sebastian was plugged into the computer when he banged his head in the accident and the computer saved his memory in its own. My dad always said that computer's memory is never lost. Then, I was drawn into all attempts to retrieve that memory. Hmm. But how did Sebastian's memory stored on his laptop's disk end up on your computer? The answer is there in the article. Look what Mr. Schulz said to the reporter. It seems while they were in the hospital, someone stole the computer games from their home. I'm sure this same lot landed up at the computer fair. And you and Grandpa bought them. When you played these games, his memory got stored on your computer. Then you played the games and retrieved that memory. That's right. But there's more to the story. One day, I received an email from real Sebastian. With trembling fingers, I read the message. Dear Michael, Thank you. I'm not sure how it happened. But thanks. You saved my life. Let's meet up soon. Cheers, Seb. P.S. Keep the games. You've earned them. What? Is that true? Everything that I have described is true. Virtually. Thus, Paul Stewart tells us a very touching and imaginative science fiction story where he uses a storyline of virtual games to depict the efforts made by a 14-year-old boy to save the life of another boy whom he does not know.